Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militande Nat has my Shri Gurabe Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namene Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Recording Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Can you share the screen with me? Yes, Maharaj. I already made you the comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we're reading mantra number uh, 11. From the Ishopanishad, I will read the mantra again. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas tad vedo bayam saha avidyaya mrityam tirva vidyaya mritam ashnate. Right? Uh, oh, I should read the translation for the mantra. Mm. Only one who can learn the process of nescience and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. All right, so uh, we're reading the purport. We're almost finished, actually, the purport. Only a little bit remaining, another page. And so Srila Prabhupada writes that the path of vidya, vidya meaning transcendental knowledge, is perfectly presented in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, guides people, it, it tells us that in the human form of life that we should inquire about the Absolute Truth. And the Absolute Truth can be understood in three features known as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. And to the, the absolute truth will be understood by people who are who are open minded. And they should have come, they've got, they've, they've gained some transcendental knowledge and because of the transcendental knowledge they've also become detached from material existence. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning of the mantra, 
we went through 18 different principles which are important to help us to cultivate proper knowledge. Well, these 18 principles, not in this mantra, in the previous mantra, mantra 10, and they're taken from the Bhagavad Gita. So the main point about these 18 principles is that we have to cultivate devotional service. And devo devotional service means to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. So everybody, everyone is actually has the opportunity to learn to how to serve the Lord, how to do bhakti yoga. And the path to achieve transcendental knowledge is described by Rupa Goswami. And Prabhupada encourages us that we should read his book, The Nectar of Devotion, and understand how to practice bhakti yoga. What is going on there? I closed the window very much. Okay. So, <laughs> Prabhupada then quotes a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam which describes how to cultivate transcendental knowledge. Tasmad ekena manasa bhagavan sadvatam patihi Shrotavya kirti tavyas cha deha pujas cha nityada. Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember, and worship the personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. So this verse describes how to practice bhakti yoga. You have to hear about Krishna. And then we have to remember Krishna. We should worship Krishna and glorify Krishna. Because Krishna is the protector of the devotees. So then Prabhupada finishes Mantra 11 by saying that the whole purpose of religion economic development and sense gratification should aim towards bhakti yoga. There's many different forms of nations 
That means material knowledge. And Sri Upanishad indicates in the following mantras, we're going to hear about them, that, that there are, they are all, without, without bhakti yoga, then all of these things, religion, economic development and sense gratification, they're just, they're just different forms of nescience. Nescience means useless knowledge. So we're going to read now Mantra 12. Andanta maha pravishanti ye sambuti mupasate tatabu ya ivate tamo ya u sambutyam rataha. Those who are engaged in the cultivation and those who are engaged in the worship of demigods enter into the darkest region of ignorance, and still more so to the worshippers of the impersonal absolute. <laughs> So we have to understand the difference. Different worshippers get different results. So Prabhupada explains about the word asambuti. Asambuti refers to those who have no independent existence. But Sambuti is the absolute personality of Godhead, and he is absolutely independent of everything. So Krishna is Sambuti, and everything else is Asambuti. Mm -hmm. So then Prabhupada quotes this important verse from the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Name vidu suragana prabhavam na mahashaya aham adiri devanam maharshinam cha sarvashaha. Neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages know my origin or opulences. For in every respect, I am the source of the demigods and the sages. So there are many demigods, great demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, but they don't know, they cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then there are great sages, like Vyasadeva, who wrote the, the Vedas and wrote so many books. But Lord Krishna said, none of these de demigods, none of the devas, and none of the great sages know about Krishna, because they all come from Krishna. It's just like when we're born, when we're little children, we'll ask our mother, where did I come from? You know, we cannot understand where we came from. Mother understands, but we, we don't understand. 
มันก็ตอนเด็กๆเราอาจจะมีคําถามว่าเอออยากถามคุณแม่ว่าแม่ผมมาจากไหนเรามาจากไหนอะไรเราอาจจะมีคําถามเหล่านี้แต่ว่าเป็นเพราะเราเนี่ยไม่รู้แต่ว่าคุณแม่จะรู้ดีว่าเรามาจากไหน In the same way nobody actually understands the origin of Krishna ในลักษณะเดียวกันเนี่ยมันก็ไม่มีใครรู้ถึงความเดิมแท้ของ Krishna because everything comes from Krishna Krishna is the origin of all the demigods and all the great sages and every mistakes. They all come from him. So these great sages and and demigods, they're powerful. They have great power, but their power is limited. ฉันเราเทวดาทั้งหมดนี้เนี่ยเขามีพลังอำนาจเหมือนกันแต่ว่าพลังอำนาจของพวกท่านทั้งหลายเนี่ยก็มีขีดจำกัด So it's very difficult for them to understand Krishna จึงเป็นสิ่งยากมากสำหรับพวกเขาที่จะเข้าใจ Krishna Because Krishna comes in the form of a man but at the same time he comes by his own internal potency Krishna เนี่ยมาในรูปของมนุษย์บุรุษชนธรรมดาแต่ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมาด้วยพลังพิเศษของพระองค์เอง So he has a human form but at the same time he's not an ordinary human พระองค์ทรงมีรูปลักษณ์เหมือนมนุษย์แต่ว่าพระองค์ทรงไม่ใช่เป็นมนุษย์ธรรมดา So Prabhupada says many philosophers and great sages they try to understand the absolute by their tiny brain เซวาราเนี่ยอธิบายบอกว่าบุคคลธรรมดาทั่วไปหรือว่านักปราชญ์เนี่ยเขาพยายามจะเข้าใจแกวกริชนาด้วยสมองอันน้อยนิดของเขา So this only helps them to reach the negative understanding of the absolute ถ้าพยายามศึกษาด้วยตนเองเช่นนั้นสิ่งที่เขาจะได้รับหรือว่ารู้ถึงได้ก็คือการเข้าได้รู้แค่นิดเดียวเกือบสัจธรรม They don't understand the positive nature of the absolute. Right. So Prabhupada explains that if you define the absolute by negation, it's not complete. So Prabhupada describes. We may say, "Oh, the absolute must be without form." And he has no qualities. And he has no name. So, like this is all negative qual. Negative aspects of the absolute. But they don't understand what is the and who is the absolute. So they can only, if they go on like that, they can only understand the impersonal nature of the supreme. เขาจะเข้าใจถึงรูปลักษณ์ที่สัตว์ธรรมที่ไร้รูปลักษณ์ของพระเจ้าอย่างเดียว They will only know God as the Brahman, the impersonal Brahman. เขาจะรู้ถึงพระเจ้าในรูปของบรมานหรือว่าแบบไร้รูปลักษณ์ But they will never understand that the absolute is also Bhagavan and he's a person. เขาไม่รู้ว่าสัตว์ธรรมสุดเนี่ยคือบาวานบาวานเนี่ยมีบุคคล And he has a form, but not a material form. He has a spiritual form. ละท่านละพระองค์ก็ทรงมีรูปลักษณ์แต่รูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์เนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นวัตถุแต่ว่าเป็นทิพย์ And he has qualities, but not material qualities, spiritual qualities. พระองค์เนี่ยมีคุณสมบัติด้วยแต่คุณสมบัตินั้นเนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นวัตถุแต่ว่าเป็นทิพย์ And he has names. His names describe his unlimited nature. And 
And so the, there are many speculators and they only know the Absolute as the impersonal Brahman. They only know the Brahman, which is just the light. The light is actually coming from the body of Krishna. Or maybe they know the Absolute as the Super Soul, who is in the heart of all living entities. But they don't know Krishna has his own form and his own qualities. And he's always full of eternity, knowledge and bliss. So the demigods, those demigods, the devas and the great sages, they think that Krishna must also be like them, that he must also be a powerful demigod. And they think the Absolute Truth is just simply the Brahman, just the energy, the light. But the devotees of Krishna, because they have surrendered to Krishna and because they have pure devotion, they know that Krishna is the Absolute. And they know that everything comes from Krishna. So these devotees always render service to Krishna. And so in the Bhagavad Gita, if we read the Bhagavad Gita in chapter 7, then it describes about how other foolish people, how they think of the Absolute. It describes that people who, because they have a, a strong desire for sense gratification, so they will worship the devas or the demigods to get material benefit. So people who do that, they're foolish people, they're not intelligent people. They're not intelligent because they're only trying to solve temporary problems. So the living, everybody is entangled in this material world. And if we want to get relief, if we want to get free from this we, if we want to go to the spiritual world, then we have to cultivate spiritual knowledge. And we have to cultivate devotion for the Supreme Lord. We should not want to go to some place anywhere in the material world just to worship a demigod. We may worship the demigods to solve some temporary problem, 
but that's not going to solve the real problem. So instead of worshipping the devas, we should worship the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead, Krishna. And it's only Krishna who can get us free from the material bondage. And by the grace of Krishna, we can go back home, back to Godhead and the spiritual world. But people who worship the demigods, they will go to the planets of the demigods. If you worship the moon, you'll go to the moon planet. And if you worship the sun, you'll go to the sun planet. So in Prabhupada's time, the, the, in those Prabhupada's time, the 1960s, 1970s, at that time, they were trying to go to the moon. And they, they were trying to go to the moon with the help of rockets. But Prabhupada said, this is nothing new. People have been doing that for a long time. Human beings have been trying to travel in outer space and to go to other planets for a long time. Of course, now they're trying to go by spaceships, but before, people were going by yoga powers, and some people would go by worshipping demigods. So Prabhupada tells us in the Vedas, in the Vedic scriptures, it said you can reach other planets by three different ways. And the most common way is by worshipping the devas, the demigods. Different demigods each have their different planets in the universe. So either you go to the sun planet or the moon planet or the planet of Brahma. Or you maybe you go to the impersonal Brahman. But you cannot go to Krishna without taking up devotional service. So the impersonal Brahman is only the, the light coming from the body of Krishna. So Krishna has his 
He has an eternal spiritual form. His form is, is eternity, knowledge and bliss, is Satchitananda. But the demigods and the great sages, they think of Krishna just to be a powerful demigod. So if you worship the demigods, you go to the planet of the demigods, and the planets of the demigods are temporary. The only permanent planets is in the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha planets. And in the spiritual planets, then Krishna is there. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells us about the nature of the material world. There is chapter 8, text 16. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avartino Arjuna Mam Opaicha Tukonte A Punar Janmana Vidyate from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. So we're learning from this mantra that if we worship the demigods, we will remain in the material world. We may go to the planets of the demigods, but we'll stay as in the material world. So the whole universe is covered by the different material elements, just like a coconut is covered by a shell. So because the, 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 the shell is tight, so nothing can come through it. So inside the shell is very dark. And that's why within each universe there has to be a sun and a moon to give us some light. And outside the universe is the spiritual sky where the Vaikuntha planets are. And all these Vaikuntha planets, they're all in, floating in the Brahma Jyoti. And the biggest planet in the spiritual sky is Krishna Loka or Goloka Vrindavan, where Krishna lives. 
ตะกลกีใหญ่ที่สุดเนี่ยก็คือโกโลกบรินตาวันกฤษณาโลกาในสถานที่ที่กฤษณาทรงประทับอยู่ and Krishna never leaves Krishna Loka แล้วกฤษณาก็ไม่เคยออกจากกฤษณาโลกา he stays there he has his eternal associates his devotees who stay there with him แล้วกฤษณาก็ทรงมีเพื่อนพระสหายและสาวกของพระองค์ที่อยู่ที่นั่น But at the same time, Krishna is present throughout throughout the material and spiritual world in everything. So this was already explained in mantra four. Krishna is present everywhere, just like the sun. <laughs> But he's in one place, just as the sun is situated in its own orbit. So Krishna is also in one place. <laughs> ที่สถิตอยู่ในที่หนึ่งแต่ว่าสายชายแสงไปทั่วทุกคน So Prabhupada says the problem of life is not solved just by going to the moon or any planet in the material world. สมมติว่าปัญหาของสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยไม่สามารถแก้ไขได้โดยการที่พวกเขาจะเดินทางไปยังดาวดวงจันทร์ So we're told we should want to try to get out of the material world. We want to go to the spiritual world. So there are many people who they they are. They appear to be religious people, but they're only interested in their own name and fame. So, so these people make a show of religion, but they're not serious to get out of the material world. Yeah, they have no real desire to go back to Godhead. They just want to look good in the material world. They just want to put on a good look and, and let people think they're very pious and very religious. And some people, some people like this, they may be atheists and they may be impersonalists. So they they lead other people. Into the darkest regions of ignorance. Because they they actually encourage people to be atheists. They're preaching atheism. They're preaching that there's no God, or they're preaching that you we're all God. Or we're all God. They say everybody's God. So that's that's atheism, actually, because if everybody's God, then there's no meaning to being God. So the atheists said there's no God, and the impersonalists support that idea. And what we mentioned, the Prajna, they say there's no God. 
แล้วก็โปรเทมิชันในรูปลักษณ์เนี่ยก็จะส่งเสริมแนวความคิดเรา Because the atheists say yeah God is not a person he's just energy he's just light แล้วก็พระเจ้าเนี่ยไม่ใช่คนแต่ว่าเป็นแค่แสงเท่านั้น But Prabhupada said in this book in this Ishopanishad We don't find any reference like that. It doesn't say like that, and everywhere it said that Krishna is a person. It said he could run. He can run faster than anyone. So if somebody is running, he must be a person. So if we say God, if we say the Supreme is not a person, that is just another ignorance. That's how people understand. People are they try to understand the absolute by their own mind and senses. So you've got some people they pretend to be religious, and you've got other people they make their own different incarnations. They present someone and they will say this person is an incarnation of God. So these people go into the darkest region of the universe. And the people who follow them will go with them. So sometimes the impersonalists, they will. Even present themselves as being incarnations of God to foolish people. And some people are innocent; they just don't know. They have no knowledge from the scriptures. And if the if they have any knowledge. Then it's it's harmful for them because they they don't know how to use it. It's better they're ignorant than no no little a little knowledge is more more harmful because they don't know how to use the knowledge. So sometimes they also worship the demigods, but they don't worship the demigods according to the scriptures. In the scriptures, it tells you different conditions how we should worship the demigods. And the scriptures also say that actually there's no need to worship the demigods. Because the worship you get from the result you get from worshiping the demigods will be temporary. The whole material world is temporary; it's not eternal. But the material world is temporary; it's not eternal. 
จักรวาลวัตถุนี้แล้วมันถาวรเออมันอ่ามันไม่ถาวร So how to get real and eternal life? And with, we have to, uh, in order to get eternal life, we have to come to devotional service. It's the only way in which we can approach the supreme personality of Godhead. And that's the only way we can get free from birth and death. So to, to, to get out of the material world, we have to we have to we have to cultivate devotion to Krishna. And the devotion to Krishna means we'll also have knowledge and detachment from the world. When we engage in devotional service, then naturally we will get transcendental knowledge. And we'll get detachment from all the material world. These two things, Gyan and Vairag, they follow wherever there is real devotion. But these people who are worshiping the demigods and who are uh, just pretending to be pious, who are just putting on a show, they don't have even knowledge or detachment. Rather, they're just the opposite. They're very attached to enjoying material life. And sometimes they put on a show and they will pretend to be very charitable and very kind to the poor and try they, they put on the, the show that they're trying to help the the world they'll pretend that there's something they're doing something religious so it's just a show. It's not real. It's not really religion. It's not real spiritual activity. They pretend to do devotional service. But, but at the same time, they do all kinds of sinful activities. So in this way, they they pass some they pass themselves off as spiritual masters and devotees. But actually, they're not they're not proper spiritual masters, and they're not really devotees either. And they don't have respect for the acharyas. They don't give proper respect to the holy teachers. And these teachers are coming in the disciplic succession, but these people don't have any disciplic succession. 
พราะว่าพระอาจารย์หรือว่าพระอาจารย์เนี่ยจะมาจากสายปรัมปราแต่ว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยจะไม่มีสายปรัมปราไปเนี่ย And the Vedas, in the Vedas, it said Acharya Pasana that we should worship the Acharyas. But they don't do that. They won't follow this. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also says. Evam param para praptam, the knowledge was delivered through the chain of the s i p l i c succession. Then, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna got that w e v a m para para praptam, ก็คือบอกว่าสายการปฏิบัตินี้เนี่ยได้มีการสืบทอดมาตามสายปรัมปราแต่ they don't take the knowledge through the disciplic succession. แต่ของพวกเขาเนี่ยพวกเขาจะไม่ได้มีการรับความรู้ผ่านทางสายปรัมปรา So they admit the, the the problem is that they actually cheat people when they lead them the wrong way. And they become they make themselves acharyas, but they don't even follow the principles of the acharyas. So Prabhupada said, "These rascals are the most dangerous people in the human society." And Prabhupada said, "There is no religious government because there's no religious government. They don't get punished. Nobody, nobody's checking on them." ตอนนั้นจากเราไม่มีรัฐบาลของศาสนาก็เลยไม่มีใครตรวจสอบหรือว่าลงโทษบุคคลประเภทนี้ The government have no idea what is right and what is wrong รัฐบาลปัจจุบันเนี่ยที่ปกครองประเทศใต้อยู่เขาไม่มีความรู้เกี่ยวกับเขาคิดว่าอะไรถูกถูกต้องอะไรถูกผิด So they get off with punishment แต่สิ่งนี้เขาก็เลยไม่สามารถที่จะลงโทษอะไรได้ And people don't know who's good, who's real, who's genuine, and who's not. So Prabhupada said, "Well, they may, they may be, they can escape the law of the government, but they cannot escape the law of the supreme." การปกครองบ้านเมืองจากรัฐบาลสมัยปัจจุบันได้แต่ไม่สามารถติดเยี่ยงกฎแห่งพระเจ้าได้ So in the Bhagavad Gita it says that envious demons, these people are like these people who are teaching these wrong things. t h e r e envious demons. ท่านนายพระกรณ์พิตาเนี่ยจะบอกว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยเป็นเหมือนมารผู้อิจฉา But they come. Dressed like they're pious, like they're very religious. So he said, Prabhupada said they will be put into the darkest region of hell. And this is described in the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, verses 19 and 20. So the Ishopanishad, this book we're reading, it tells us that these people, these cheaters, they're going towards the most terrible place in the universe. So after they finish their business as being a spiritual master, then they go to hell. And 
they they do this business they do the spiritual master business simply for their own sense gratification so it's very dangerous very bad thing we have to be able to recognize them we have to avoid them. All right, so we will stop here and we will ask if there's any questions. Oh, Yavati Sachi has already got her hand up. Yes. Okay. Yes, Yavati Sachi. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, how, how can we uh, really feel that we own everything to Krishna? <clears throat> Not on the uh, intellectual level, but um, to feel it in our hearts. Mm. We have to develop our, our love for Krishna. Uh, how, Guru Maharaj brought us a question, how can we... How can we develop the feeling that everything belongs to Krishna? Okay. How can we actually feel it in our heart? So we have to, we, it begins by hearing. We have to hear from the scriptures and we have to recognize that what the scriptures are saying is true. Our heart is very dirty and does not like to accept the truth from the scriptures. We have to clean the heart by chanting Hare Krishna carefully. So, it takes some time. You have to be very serious. You have to really want to uh, get this result. But, if you're serious and you can do it, you have to. We have to clean the heart. It takes some time to clean the heart, uh, to get rid of our conditioning, to take the, all this, all the bad thoughts away. So by chanting and by service and by hearing, gradually our heart will start to become convinced that everything is Krishna's and everything belongs to Him. Because we are conditioned souls, we are thinking, I am the proprietor. We are thinking, this is mine, this belongs to me. But you think, if we think about everything seriously, then we understand, well, I was born with nothing. I came to this world with nothing. How can I claim this is mine? How can I say this belongs to me? I came with nothing. Okay. 
้แล้วเราเนี่ยจะมาคิดอะไรแล้วอ้างว่าอันนี้มันเป็นของเรามันเป็นของเราทำไมว่า When we leave this world, we will take nothing with us. Nothing is actually ours. Everything that we see, it belongs to Krishna. It's meant for His pleasure. But we are trying to compete. We are trying to take from what is not actually ours. We are trying to take from Krishna. Of course, Isha Panishad tells us you can take what is your quota. You can take as much as you need. Don't take more than what you need. So we have to purify the heart by regularly hearing and chanting. And gradually, we come to understand what is actually the truth. So, Krishna doesn't mind you to take something. You need something. You need to live, but don't take more than what you need. And Take honestly. Do everything honestly. Don't be lying and cheating and stealing and doing everything in a black in a in a bad way. Do everything properly, honestly. เพราะฉะนั้นเราเนี่ยควรที่จะทำทุกอย่างเนี่ยไปแบบด้วยความซื่อสัตย์ทุจริตแล้วก็เท่าที่เรามีความจำเป็นที่จะได้หรือว่าควรที่จะได้ไม่ควรที่จะแบบว่าทำอะไรที่มันผิดกฎหมายหรือว่าอะไรที่มันแบบว่ามันไม่ได้หมายไว้เพื่อเราไม่ควรที่จะกอบโวยหรือว่าลุกมาสวิชนาอาร์เรนจิสิสวอร์คริชนาสกิฟนัสสิสวอร์ลด์ฟอร์ทูเพอร์เพสิสวิชนาเนี่ยให้ตรงนี้เราว่าเนี่ยเพื่อสองอย่าง One reason is one purpose is that we want to enjoy without Krishna. So you can live here and try to enjoy without Krishna, and you will suffer. You will, you know, you take birth again and again in different bodies. You l l stay in the material world. But, But Krishna also creates this material world. It's an opportunity for us to get out, to get free of birth and death, and to purify ourselves from all the material desires. And so we have to consider: What do we want to do? What do you want to do with this life? How are you going to use it? Are you going to use your life for Krishna, or are you going to use your life for your own sense gratification? So we have that free will. Krishna gives us the independence to choose. So we're we're fortunate. We have been given the opportunity. To somehow contact devotees, and we have learned learning about transcendental knowledge. Yeah, we have now got the opportunity 
ว่าด้วยความโชคดีเราได้รับโอกาสในการที่จะได้พบหาสมาคมกับเสาแล้วก็ได้เรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับความรู้ที่ We understand our situation in this material world. เราต้องเข้าใจถึงสถานการณ์ของเราในโลกวัตถุนี้ก่อน So we should take this opportunity very seriously. Try to get out from this material world. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. And it seems sometimes that we act ourselves without Krishna. And how can we avoid this illusion? We act ourselves without Krishna. How can we avoid this illusion? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Archana. Act ourselves like we do action without Krishna, like that. Yeah, we think there's no mm. Krishna. You know. Okay. Uh, ถ้าเกิดว่าแล้วถ้าเกิดบางครั้งเนี่ยเราคิดเองเราคิดเราทํากิจกรรมไปเองที่เราเห็นว่าเราคิดแล้วก็เราทําเองมันไม่ได้มาแบบว่าเพราะว่าเกิดนาโดยปัสสาวะกิจนาเนี่ยอันนี้เราจะออกจากแนวความคิดแบบนั้นได้ Well, we have to understand that there must be God. There must be some creator, some person who is responsible for this world. Where does this world come from? We see so much arrangement, so much design in the universe and in nature. There's so much design. So. If we say who made it, and we say, oh, it's just nature, it's just by chance, it's just like that, that is not very intelligent. We have to understand there's a, a designer, there's a person who made everything. <laughs> Just like this universe, there's so many planets and so many, and they're revolving in such a systematic manner. Everything is controlled. So who is the controller? So. We could say, well, the devas are there, the, but above all the devas, there's one supreme controller, and that is Krishna. So, we have to convince people that there is God. God is there. And God is a person. Just, just, just like you and I, we are persons. If we say God is not a person, then I mean we are, we are, we are greater than God. If we are something He is not, then we are greater than Him. So God is also a person, but not an ordinary person like us. He is a transcendental person. แต่ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีพระองค์เนี่ยถ้าเกิดเราไม่มีรูปลักษณ์เนี่ยพระองค์ก็ทรงดูเหมือนกับไม่ได้มีขนาดเรายังมีรูปลักษณ์เลยแล้วถ้าเกิดพระองค์ไม่มีเนี่ยมันน่าจะเป็นการแบบว่าพระองค์จะเหนือไปกว่าเราไม่ได้เพราะฉะนั้นแล้วมันถึงเป็นตากาให้เราเข้าใจได้ว่าพระองค์มีรูปลักษณ์ Is it clear? ชัดเจนไหมคะ Yes. yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for your explanation. It's clear now. Okay. So, Sharia has a question.
ช่นค่ะเอสซีนาบอลออฟิเซส my question refer about สังการิยาสังกาจาริยา who is guru ajarya of Hinduism who mentioned in his principle about uh, Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead but nowadays scripture of Hinduism refer as all demigod are equal so how we understand the distorted about scripture Guru Maharaj ค่ะพี่เพิ่มภาษาไทยด้วยค่ะเหมือนกับว่าอันนี้อ้างอิงถึงสั่งการจริยานะคะที่เป็นกรุอาจริยาของฮินดูอิซึมเนี่ยค่ะเหมือนกับว่าเขาเคยเหมือนกับว่าเมนชั่นเอาไว้ในปริ principle ของเขาว่าคริชนาเนี่ยเป็นพระเจ้าสูงสุดนะคะแต่ทีเนี้ยพอทุกวันนี้เนี่ยเหมือนสคริปเจอร์ของฮินดูเนี่ยกล่าวกล่าวอ่ากล่าวถึงว่าเดมิกอทุกองค์เนี่ยเท่ากันแล้วก็เราจะเข้าใจสิ่งที่เปลี่ยนแปลงเหล่านี้ได้ยังไงค่ะ Well first of all the word Hindu it is not a religion there's no official religion of Hindu อันดับแรกเนี่ยเราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนเลยว่ามันไม่มีคำว่าฮินดูเนี่ยในในสามันไม่มีศาสนาที่ชื่อว่าฮินดูคำว่าฮินดูมันถูกใช้ในการแปลว่าผู้ที่อยู่ในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มีชื่อเสียงในพื้นที่ที่มี And became the Hindus. Anyway, Shankaracharya, his teaching is popular. Yes, he taught impersonalism. He taught that ultimately everything is impersonal. And then Shankaracharya, yeah, got lessons. ตอนแรกเนี่ยท่านก็มาสอนในปรัชญาที่ว่าปรัชญาของการไม่มีรูปหลัก So he had to teach that because he was defeating he was he was defeating the Buddhist people because before Shankaracharya Buddhism was very popular in India so Shankaracharya came to defeat the Buddhists แล้วก็สังฆาจารย์เนี่ยมาเพื่อที่จะคัดเพื่อที่จะจำกัดแนวความคิดแบบ Uh, Buddhist, and Shankaracharya, he drove Buddhism out of India by his preaching. And he brought back the Vedas. And he established Brahminical culture again. So how did he do it? Well, the Buddhists they were preaching that the absolute truth is zero. They say oh, everything is zero. Nothing, nothing is real. You are not real. I am not real. The world is not real. God is not real. แล้วก็เขาก็จะสอนถึงคำที่ว่าไม่มีอะไรเป็นความจริงเลยมันไม่มีอะไรเป็นความจริงอยู่โลกนี้ไม่ใช่ความจริงเธอไม่ใช่ความจริงฉันไม่ใช่ความจริง So Shankaracharya came and he thought the absolute truth is not zero it's one he thought there's a oneness he thought about the Brahman แล้วเขาก็จะคิดถึงการที่เขาจะบอกว่าทุกอย่างเนี่ยเป็นหนึ่งหนึ่งที่เขาพูดถึงแล้วฉะนั้นก็คือประมาณนั่นเอง And so he brought he in this way he he defeated the Buddhists and he brought back the Vedas and he established the Brahminical culture เราท่านก็นำเอาท่านก็เลยเอาเอาคำไล่ศาสนาพุทธออกไปแล้วก็เริ่มเอาความเป็นเมื่อเช้าแบบปรามาณะเนี่ยเข้ามา Before before the before the Vedas Buddhism was there no 
Well, before, b before Buddhism even, the brahmanas had become corrupt. You see, Lord Krishna, he had established the brahminical culture, but the brahmanas had become degraded in the Kali Yuga, and they were killing animals. They were killing all the animals, so then Lord Buddha came and he taught the people don't kill the animals. He taught them ahimsa. And he taught, he taught them, don't follow the Vedas, just, uh, just be a good person. So, uh, Shankaracharya came and he brought back the Vedas. And he showed also that there's good brahmanas. He brought good brahmanas, austere brahmanas who were not materialistic. Who practiced the brahminical culture. So he didn't teach them the Vaishnava philosophy. He just taught them that ultimately everything is one. But he brought back the Vedas, so that was good. And then after Shankaracharya, and then the Vaishnava Acharyas came. And they taught the real message of the Vedas. That it's not only one, but there's also difference. There's the one, there's the Brahman, there's Krishna, but there's also the living entities, and they're different. So Shankaracharya, he did great service. He, he got Buddhism out of India. And Buddhism went to countries like Thailand and Burma and China, these places. Because these people, they are atheists, they don't believe in God anyway, so it's easier for them to follow Buddha. So according to what people can understand, they have to teach. So Shankaracharya, he taught everything is Brahman. And then after that, then the Vaishnavas came and they taught the real message. That there's one Supreme Lord and we're all his servants. So all the Vaishnava Acharyas, they teach, they agree to that. So Shankaracharya's teaching was, it was an, an emergency situation. 
การจองห้องสังกัดจาแรเป็นสถานการณ์ฉุกเฉิน To bring back the Vedas. And to bring back also the the Vedic culture, the the division of society into the different varnas. Lord Krishna arranged to divide society into four varnas. It was Lord Krishna's own system. So when Buddha came and led the people away, he said, "No, everybody's equal. Everybody's one." This was only a temporary. So this was not. The real way it's supposed to be. That was a temporary measure. It was an emergency to stop the people killing animals. And then Shankaracharya came and he brought the real message. And then the Vaishnavas came, and they gave the complete message. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. But um, about principle, some principle about Baja Govindam is mentioned by Sankaracharya, but. Um, Why? Why nowadays uh, about Hinduism people don't accept that? Why they accept about that we God are equal, uh, equal, Guru Maharaj? Yes, because they want material enjoyment. They want sense gratification. So the worship of the demigods, they get results quickly. So they they don't want to worship Krishna because it takes more time. They have to be more patient to worship Krishna, but you worship the demigods, you get results quickly. And the worship of worship of the demigods is done by the less intelligent people. Most of the people are not intelligent. Most of the people are foolish. They're materialistic, and that's why they worship demigods. Okay. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your explain. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The worship of demigods will never get people free of birth and death. They will stay in the material world. การบูชาเทวดาเนี่ยจะทำให้เขาเนี่ยอยู่ในโลกวัตถุนี้ต่อไปแค่นั้น Okay, Vaishnavi Madhiji has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Guru Bhat. My doubt is, people who worship demigods, according to the Vedas, they go to demigod planets. But people who worship um, demigods, uh, false incarnations in their own way for name and fame, like that, they will go to the darkest region of hell. Um, is my understanding correct, Guru Maharaj? Yes. Because it's okay. That's what the mantra said. Okay, because some years ago I went to a event and they are uh, respecting Bhagavad Gita. They showed all the incarnations of Vishnu, and finally they showed Sai Baba as one of the incarnation of Vishnu. Uh, so this was against uh, the Vedic injunction, but the followers they seem to be innocent, and uh, it's a bit hard to believe that they will go to the darkest region of hell, Guru Maharaj. But yeah, I uh, yes, uh, that's what I want to clarify it. Well, the the people who are teaching that, who are promoting that, they're the main culprits. And because they're they're teaching like that, so the people who follow them, 
you know, they'll go with them because they're following these people. They're following these people who are teaching them, who are teaching them the wrong thing. They're following them. So they go there, they get the same destination as their teacher. You have to be careful who you follow. Right? So if, if these teachers are teaching something which is very wrong, and they're establishing someone else as an incarnation of God, and they're not promoting the actual principles of religion, then it's a serious offense. Right? So the people who are teaching this, they'll get the reactions. And if you follow these people, then you get also reactions. Yeah, they may appear to be pious. Of course, there's some piety there, something in them, which is good. Just we said, and some of the problems is that sometimes these people who are claiming to be incarnations of God don't follow any religious principles. So we have to see how much they follow the principles of religion. You know, if, if they're actually pious, as you say, you know, then we have to see, you know, do, do they actually follow the principles? Is it only just that one man who they're claiming to be an incarnation of Vishnu? Is everything else about them really good? But sometimes you see, you get people, you know, they, 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 they do everything wrong and, you know, and, and they're taking a lot of money from people, they do a lot of business to get money from people. And so this is, these are problems. You get a lot of money from people, they accumulate so much wealth, and you have to see what's going on, what's happening. And so, yeah, it's not hard and fast that everybody will go to hell, but you have to see how much they're following, what to, to what degree they're following. If you get people who are meat eaters and drunkards and doing all these things in the name of religion and they say it's okay, we can do it, he's, he's God and he allows us to do it and like, and he does it himself, then it's very bad, right? So? Yes, Maharaj, understand now, I understand. Okay. Uh, one more uh, question, Guru Maharaj. Uh, we, there are atheists, demigods, impersonalists, and in this mantra we study that the demigods are better than the impersonalists. Uh, it was uh, really interesting to know this point. I was thinking, is atheist also better than demigods and impersonalist? Atheist? Ah, yes, atheist. Well, you have to, we have to consider what kind of atheists are they? Are they people who don't re accept scriptures? Do they reject the scriptures? You see, people who are impersonalists, in a sense, they're also atheists, they're, because they say everybody's God. If you say everyone God, then nobody is really God. So that's also another kind of atheism. Impersonalism is also a kind of atheism, Prabhupada was explaining there. Because for the impersonalists, there's no God. There's only the oneness, and everybody's one, and we're all... We're all the Supreme, so we're all God. So, everyone's an atheist. If, if you follow the impersonal path, they're all atheists. Hmm. Hmm, yes, Guru Maharaj. But uh, they can reach at least the goal of uh, Brahman effulgence, right? Guru Maharaj, they have something to reach out of the cycle of birth and death. Well, it will depend. If they're Brahma Gyanis, then they can reach the Brahma Jyoti. If they're simply, but if they make, make offenses, if they say that when Krishna comes into this world that he comes in a material form, then that's an offense. If they deride the form of the Lord when he comes into the material world, if they claim it to be material, then this is offensive and that's very bad. 
But if they if they're just simply practicing impersonalism, they just simply focus on the Brahman and the oneness and they don't commit any offenses, then they can go to Brahmachoyati. We see like the four the four Kumaras. The four Kumaras were impersonalists. They went they went to the spiritual world and then they became devotees. So it's a question of uh, how much they are offensive and how much they're innocent. If they just simply focus on the, the Brahman and they don't deride the Lord when the Lord comes into this world, then it's okay. But that destination they achieve, the, the Brahma Jyoti, that is where the, the demons who are killed by Krishna go. So that is pointed out to us that the demons who Krishna kills, they go there to the impersonal Brahma Jodhi. It's not a great destination. Is it? You understand? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. It's not a great destination, and we are not getting any happiness or joy in that destination. Yeah, there's no there's service, no activity. Yeah. No activity. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Okay. Sri Devi has a question. Sri Devi Maharaji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is this. Recent, uh, uh, around seven months ago, my, my children and I rescued two mongrel dogs from being killed uh, by the dog catchers because we know the dog catchers are going to catch them and kill them. And later, we uh, temporarily uh, hosted them uh, in, in our house compound. And uh, when when someone uh, wh whom I don't know very well, actually, she came for some other some other business. She told me that she had gone to Kailash and this and that. So she asked, who are they? I said that these are two dogs we rescued from being killed. Then she started to tease me and say in a ridicule, like trying to ridicule me by saying, oh, how come uh, you, are a, you are a devotee, but how come you're attached to helping the dogs? You're supposed to be detached. So I was trying to defend myself and explain something to her, but she wouldn't hear of it. So uh, what, do you, what, what is Guru Maharaj's response to this? Because on humanitarian grounds, we, we can't stand by and see a dog going to be killed. So I just want Guru Maharaj's view. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yes, all right. You didn't like to see stand by and see dog being killed. At the same time, you don't want to bring the dogs into your home. You should be cautious about that, you know, that you bring the dogs into your home. It's, <laughs> you know, that's going to another extreme. You see? You have to... It's nice you're, you're compassionate on other living entities. You didn't want to see them being killed. Okay, but at the same time, how much care can you take? Care, how much can you take care of them? You're going to keep them in your own home? That's not a good idea. First of all, we don't really... Devotees shouldn't keep dogs at home. Dogs are not really meant to be kept in the house. They're meant to be kept... They can keep them outside. You can keep them outside if you like. Okay, they can be outside in the yard and so on. But you don't want to keep them in the house. That's a problem because, you know, you worship at home. You have your deities in there. Dogs have no standards of cleanliness. So you have to be cautious about, you know, what extent you're going to go to help other living entities. It's, it's, a delay, it's difficult sometimes, and sometimes it happens with people. You may see unfortunate people in very difficult circumstances and you want to help them and be compassionate on them. But ultimately, how much can you save them? How much can you save them? You know, I was with Srila Prabhupada one time, and, and we were on a walk, and Prabhupada told a story. He said there was a beggar came to Lord Shiva and his wife, 
and he came begging alms. And Lord Shiva's wife, she told Lord Shiva, oh, we should help him. And so Lord Shiva said, help him. He said, it's his karma, you can't do much to help him. And so to convince his wife, Lord Shiva took a papaya fruit and he put some jewels inside the papaya fruit. And then he gave the papaya to the beggar. And the beggar didn't know there were jewels inside the fruit. So the beggar took the fruit and went and sold it for a few rupees. He didn't know there was valuable jewels inside. So Lord Shiva said to his wife, he said, you see, this is the beggar's karma, that they have their karma. You can't really do much to change their karma. And similarly, you know, dogs also, you know, they have their karma. Now, okay, you save them from being killed, but what are you going to do with them? <laughs> yeah, how often can you save them? It's a, you know, how much, um, you have to be careful. You bring them to your home and, and, and they become the center of your attention and you stop, you know, your deity worship goes. Just like Bharat Maharaj, he saved the life of a deer and he got very attached to that deer. And because of his attachment to the deer, next life he became a deer. So you have to be very careful when you start getting involved with animals like even dogs. You get affection for the dog and you lose your Krishna consciousness. Mm. So there's, you have to be cautious, you know, yeah, it's a point, you know, you get, we get so much affectionate to the animals and our devotional service suffers. Mm. So you don't want that to happen. No. So you have to be careful. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I, I, I realized immediately after that incident, I, I realized very quickly, I realized uh, the, 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 the dilemma and the mistake. I realized everything. I realized the uh, uh, King Bharat's experience with the deer. I felt it so parallel to what I was going through also. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, yes, Guru Maharaj, I had to make some, uh, what you call, uh, I mean, uh, life-changing decisions also. As a result of this one act of saving the, the dogs, I had to make drastic uh, decisions also. Yeah. It altered, it drastically altered some things in my life also. I had to make some decisions, very important decisions, yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's the reason why at that moment it was so uh, frightening, the way they brought the hook and the way they were dragging the dog on the road, the way they were, they were screaming, the dogs were howling. So it just appeared a humane thing to do at that time, but then uh, there were long lasting repercussions actually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Thank Krishna. you so much. I'm grateful for your answer. Yogita, have you got a quick question? Uh, Gurudev, there's a question on what Vaishnavi Mataji just asked about Sai Baba. Because uh, all over India, they worship him. That He had shown himself as an incarnation of uh, the Lord. Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. And uh, nothing that I can say to the adults because, you know, it's disrespectful. I just don't say anything. I just pay my respects and as a namaste, and that is it. That please help me serve the Lord if you have that power. That's all I ask, Guruji. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, Guruji. That's all I want to ask because I have nothing. There's nothing against him anywhere, so nothing that I can state that is firm from anywhere that they would believe in, other adults, so better not say anything I thought. Mm -hmm. So I just pay my respects, that's it. Okay, yeah. Mm. Thank you, Gurdha. Okay, so thank everyone for their questions and for their comments, and thank Archana for her translation. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki.
Biden, Barack Obama, Biden. 